and I'm so glad to be with all of you this afternoon. I am going to share my screen so that we can start this uh, this program, and because uh, I have a lot of things to cover. Um, Wichita has been a really fascinating place for me to be because of being able to see the history of Wichita through its buildings. Okay. Why? Oh. Okay. My down button's not working here for some reason. Um, and so um, it's, it's fun to look at uh, where we started in 1870 and where we are going. So I want to start with government buildings. Um, the first iconic building I can think of is the old city hall down at the corner of William and Main. Um, and architects are important here because I'm going to mention this, these architects multiple times through this presentation. This is a Proudfoot and Bird design structure. They originally came to Wichita from Des Moines, Iowa, where they designed a lot of the Iowa State Capitol buildings, but they moved, they came here in the boom of the 1880s. So um, they designed multiple buildings here in Wichita from about 1885 through 1892. And Richard Zoni and Romanesque is defined by these towers that you see, uh, the, arc, the arched window openings. Um, you can't see the detail on the stone, but it's, it's a, a rough textured stone. And this is limestone uh, that was quarried in southeastern Kansas. Um, again, the old county courthouse was built in 89, 1889 through um, 1890. And this was another architect designed building. They hired William McPherson uh, to design this building. And this is the only remaining building that he designed here in Wichita. Um, this is also, you see classical uh, revival elements on this. Notice the pediments over the, the entryway on the south uh, elevation, which would be to the right of your screen. Um, the pyramidal towers, the dentaling um, details, modillions um, around the towers beneath the eave overhang uh, and the banding. Um, between the first floor and the second floor. And then there are also um, green men, which is a fun term. It, it's, it refers to uh, the sculptures um, that are made out of stone that maybe represent a person's face. You can see those on the, um, the yeah. old Wichita City Hall yeah. also. Um, this is what we call a commercial two-part building. It's not an architectural style. It's, a, it's more of a, a form uh, function. And this is the old Ark Valley Lodge. Um, it was designed, well, we don't know who it was designed by. Um, a Josiah Walker was listed as the brick mason um, for this building. And the history behind this building is that it was in the African-American business district of early Wichita. That was uh, mostly along Main Street and then as time evolved, um, the African-American community started uh, moving east and this area at Central and Main became more of the governmental um, area. Oops, sorry. Uh, this is the US um, courthouse uh, post office. Um, and it was designed by um, the federal government, they had a cadre of architects that they would um, have designed their, their public buildings. Um, inside this building, and I don't know how many of you have been in there, but during the New Deal area and WPA, um, the projects that they had, particularly with artists, were to create 
uh, murals and paintings that they would uh, then um, exhibit in their uh, public spaces. And this has two um, really nice uh, murals hanging in the public space. And this is, this is Art Deco. Um, Art Deco has um, a lot of vertical lines. It has different um, design features on it. You can't see it very well, but in that corner tower, um, the banding beneath the windows on each side of that corner has a pressed uh, design in it. So, uh, and then you see the elements at the top of the piers, um, that type of thing. They, they can be colored or not. I'm gonna show you a couple of buildings in just a minute that, that have the relief um, that are also colored. And this is, this is another WPA uh, project. Uh, it was designed by L.W. Clapp. This is the comfort station restroom in uh, North Riverside Park, just west of the um, Park Villa. And it has, this is one of the, the buildings that have or has, can you guys see my mouse, Charles? Yes, yes I can. Okay, this is what well, this is colored cartholite, which was a um, a concrete uh, product that had colored crushed glass in the mixture that gave those uh, designs the colors. Um, you can see up here that this is. That's also cartholite. It's just got, it's a monochromatic and it has a design in it. But L.W. Clapp meant a lot to this city and did a lot for this city. Um, um, Charles and I were talking about this building uh, before we started the program. This is the Occidental Hotel. It was built in 1873 and 74. Um, this is Italianate, and what makes it Italianate are one of the features is this, under the eave up here, you have paired brackets. Um, that's a detailing in the eaves that is um, particular to Italianate structures. Um, the other thing would be um, the window spacing, this... Um, attention to where the main entrance would have been. These shutters were added maybe 10 years later or more later uh, than the original building. So it, it gives it almost kind of a, a French uh, feeling too. Oops. Um, and this is the Eaton Hotel in the East Douglas Avenue Historic District. And this was built um, from 1886 to 1906. And this is another uh, architect that had, call them itinerant almost, because Proudfoot and Bird uh, were in Wichita from 1885 until about 1892 or 93. And then they moved uh, to Salt Lake City. And there are examples of their um, architecture in Salt Lake City. So C.W. Terry was another one of those itinerant architects as you know, when we had, were in the building boom and there was money to be made, we had several of these types of architectural firms or architects that were in town that later moved on when the, when the uh, bust was in, um, entrenched and, and we didn't have much going on. Uh, this is the Cress building. Uh, and this is Gothic Revival. One of the main features of Goth Gothic Revival is this crenellated uh, parapet. Another thing that you see are the quatrefoils um, in the window banding, and particularly this um, arched um, four window bay that you see repeated um, along the facade. Um, there is colored terracotta um, up in the, the upper facade. 
And I'm trying to think, I don't see any down uh, below this, this first floor um, demarcation here between the first floor and the upper floors. Um, this building was designed by a George McKay that was an architect um, for um, the Crest Company. And this was kind of, this was an experiment in that this was kind of a five and dime store and they wanted to test out and see how a high style of architecture would maybe improve their sales, that type of thing. But, but I've typically seen these buildings in other, uh, other towns, uh, both small and similar sizes of Wichita. Kathy, could we, yes. could, could we stress addresses when talking to people about, about this? People are asking about the specific addresses and this one oh, is really okay. visible. Oh, okay, sure. And sure. and honestly, we have that PD, a PDF of the uh, which the, of the of the booklet on this, and we can include it in, in right. text to everyone as well. But so, I'm sorry. No, thank you. So this is the at the corner of East Douglas and to Topeka, I think. It's across the street from. Uh, oh well, we can read it. It's Broadway. This one's the readable one. Broadway. Yeah, <laughs> we can read this one. Okay, I'll do better with that. Okay, and this one is at, this is the um, Eagles Lodge number 132. And many of you may remember this, uh, there was a funeral home located in this. Um, it's down at the corner of uh, St. Francis and William. Uh, and it was, it was painted blue, I believe at the time, this was a historic income tax credit project. They repaired the original windows where they could and replicated them where they couldn't. And this is what we call a Beaux-Arts um, style of architecture. It has, it has a whole bunch of um, architectural features that kind of just blend together. Here you see um, the um, modillions that you might see on Italianate. Um, you see some of these um, arched window hoods with the keystone in them. Uh, you see a, this is a Greek revival, just a typical Greek revival pediment. I mean, you could look at the Parthenon and see that very thing. And then you have different kinds of window hoods um, over other doors at entryways. Uh, and this is, um, I think this, this is a metal awning that was added but um, this, is, this is just a super great building with these fan lights, um, the four over four double hung sash windows paired. Um, and this was built in 1916 and the architect was a Fred Mamp, M-A-M-P-E and he was from Kansas City. And I don't have much information on him. And of course, how I don't, I probably none of you recognize this building. This is the Mentholatum building um, designed by UG Charles. And he's another uh, important architect in Wichita uh, that practiced between uh, like maybe 98 through 1916. And then he became uh, a kind of an inventor and um, owns several patents, one of which I thought was entry interesting is that I found his name on a flagpole uh, as the, the patent owner of the flagpole. And this is located um, at, on East Douglas uh, at Cleveland Street, I believe. And it's a reinforced concrete building with stucco. And the other thing that I thought was interesting about this is that the white of the stucco and the um, green trim, mint green trim, is um, the Mentholatum Company's uh, brand colors. And then it has this um, uh, Spanish revival. It has this tiled roof dome, um, the verticality going on in, with the pilasters. Um, and it's uh, uh, 
kind of Turiguer-esque. I don't know if any of you have heard that term, but it's kind of a, an elaborate uh, design with uh, along the tops cornices of buildings. And this is the Frank Lloyd Wright House. Um, I put this in um, commercial because it is a museum now. Uh, this is one of the last prairie houses, prairie style houses that he designed in the country after he did this. Um, he went to Japan and started doing uh, more um, Asian influenced buildings um, in point um, the music, and I can't think of the name of the building, but on WSU yeah, campus yeah. is a building where the music department was, maybe still is, on WSU that was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, this was uh, built between 1915 and 1918, and actually it was um, Alan um, White's wife that um, hired uh, Frank Lloyd Wright to design this building. And so she had a, a few uh, touches that she added. But if, if any of you have not been to that building, it's, it's a great tour. And I would recommend that you do that because you really understand how, um, how he designed the buildings to allow the building to interact with the um, the uh, landscape and the outdoors, it, you just kind of meld into the natural um, landscaping. And this is at 255 North Roosevelt. It's and the it was, Corbin Education Center at, at WSU, that's it. Kathy. That's it. I'm you, I was Carl. struggling to draw, to, to come up with that and several of our audience members did. Yes, I appreciate that. Um, this is, um, this is a craftsman style uh, apartment building. Um, Wichita started having what we call purpose built apartments. Um, like after 1905, 1908, sometime in that era. Because before what you would see would be how large houses that were um, boarding houses or whatever. But then we got into this um, purpose built apartments and the craftsman style that you see here is it's um, generally they're one to three stories um, they have you know they have a bay on this end and this wing on on the west end and then the the porches uh, that open off the interior uh, apartment rooms, and then again, notice the cornice uh, with these uh, brackets, uh, and that's a typical uh, craftsman detail is bracketing with uh, under the eave overhang. And this was built in uh, 1917, and um, there are a lot of, in addition to the architects that we keep coming um, up against with uh, having designed significant buildings in Wichita, we also have a group of contractors that um, were, were um, very, what do I want to say, noteworthy at the time. And, and the contractors that did this were Dieter and, and Wenzel, and they did several of these um, apartment buildings, some of which are no longer standing um, the, there were three apartments down on uh, South Market and South Topeka that have been demolished and they were the, they were the um, builders for those three. And, and this is at the corner of Topeka and Third Street. And then um, this is the Allen Market. It's, it's just, um, west of the Dillon's store at the corner of Hillside and Douglas. And this is Art Deco. And I wanna bring you back again to um, these decoration, decorative features. That is Carthalite again. The black is, um, oh, how did we make that black glass? Uh, but it is glass. Um, 
and it's tinted with a, a mineral tinting, not like what they use today for, for coloring. Um, and this is a Glenn Thomas uh, design building, North High, Manissa Bridge um, uh, has cartholite. North High has the terracotta and what cartholite was, was a, oh, what do I wanna say? Is a product that was kind, it, it made it not so expensive to have maybe the same coloring, that type of thing as terracotta. So it was less expensive to produce. And so um, that was developed here in Wichita. Um, and, and Thomas used that quite a bit. He used it on the Manissa Bridge. It's used on the municipal building at the um, airport uh, out on McConnell Air Force Base. It's now a, a wonderful museum. And so uh, the Art Deco just has, it has all kinds of, of um, geometric patterns um, that type of thing uh, is what, what makes it um, unique. Uh, the Highland Dairy Building on yeah. Central um, at about St. Francis is a wonderful example of Art Deco. I love that building with the cow up there. Yeah. And then um, the other thing we have, and, and we are very fortunate um, that we have the original Darius Munger House that was built in 1869 when Wichita was just a trading post. And this was a, um, from things that I have read, this was a stagecoach uh, stop. And this is, this is a double pin log cabin, uh, two rooms basically is what that means. And uh, it is now uh, uh, at Cowtown Museum, it was moved there in 1952 in order to save it from uh, demolition. And the location that I understand the area that it was in was around Waco and uh, Murdoch, 8th Street, somewhere around there. And they moved it to uh, Cowtown Museum. And then uh, University Hall, Davis Hall. This is another Proudfoot and Bird. Uh, design. Uh, you can see the same elements on this as you did on the um, old city hall, the original city hall building. Uh, this happens to be executed uh, in brick and, um, and limestone. You can see the, the cornice here, the banding here um, with the, the modillions underneath. You see the arched windows. Um, this is uh, what we call a water table. Uh, and then the first floor, this is all uh, limestone. Um, you have uh, triplet windows, uh, paired windows, um, this um, conical design up here on the tower. You see that replicated over on either end of the building and then this um, spire. And that, that roof would have, um, would have been all uh, slate tile uh, in, in some of the renovations. We now have a product um, that is, um, gives the same profile and same look as slate, but it's not as expensive. So sometimes you will see original materials replaced with that. And Guess again, this is another Proudfoot and Bird building. It's on the corner of First and Topeka. It is the Scottish Rite um, Temple. It was originally built um, as the YMCA in 1887 and 88. And then the Masons uh, bought it in um, 1898. And there was an addition made at this location that was done by C.W. Terry. I've mentioned him before in 1907. And again, you have the crenellations, you have the tower, um, uh, you have the arched windows. 
um, it's it's kind of if if you can imagine this, it kind of sits and anchors itself to the ground by the weight of the materials uh, used in the building. This is um, the Fairmount uh, Congregational Church. Um, and this is Richard Sony and Roman Ness, but it's, it's, um, it's done in frame. Uh, it's a wood frame with wood siding. And so it's, it's a totally different material that you would know, normally see uh, Richardsonian Romanesque architecture in. That's uh, typically it's brick uh, or stone, some kind of some kind of masonry. But other than um, the entrances to the building and whatever, all of the mat exterior materials are wood frame and wood siding. And this was uh, designed by W. R. Stringfield. Uh, he's not very well known in Wichita, but if y'all remember, um, in Central Riverside Park, there's that little um, oriental looking building, I think that was the um, concession stand. It's, it was over, it's over by the wildlife exhibit. Um, he designed that. And those are the only two buildings of which I'm aware that, that he designed in Wichita. And this was built in 1910, um, they still it still serves as a church, but I don't. It's no longer associated with Fairmount Congregational Church of, that I'm aware. Uh, Proudfoot and Bird, uh, you're beginning to see a theme here. This is the McCormick School. Um, it was built in 1890. And then it had a 1930s edition, which, uh, which you don't see. And that was uh, a Glenn Thomas edition. But again, it has the same elements um, as the other Richardsonian Romanesque uh, buildings that I've shown you. This um, segmented arch, these towers, um, that cornice at the roof line, the um, Fenestration of the windows and door openings being very uh, symmetrical. And this is over at Matthewson and McCormick. I don't have the exact address of it, but it's, it's a couple of blocks west of South Seneca and south of um, the interstate, US 54, Kellogg. And this is the Carnegie Library uh, it was built in 1915, and it's it's my understanding, and I was looking for this information, and maybe some of you out there in the audience may know this. Um, Mrs. Murdoch, who was the patron of the art museum, she had helped negotiate this Carnegie Library to be built here in Wichita, and at one point, um, you could go in, I don't believe the, the, um, the sculpture, the bas-relief plaster uh, sculpture of her is, remains in the building, but you can still see the bones of the library. This is now a part of Fidelity Bank. And you can, it, you can go in there and you can see um, the openness that maintains the feel of what the original library space was. And again, this is Beaux Arts. You have these ionic uh, columns. Uh, you have the modillions at the um, roof line. Uh, you have a banding across the, the separates the lower facade and the upper facade. Um, these kind of um, well, they're called flat arches, but that has never really appealed to me because how can an arch be flat? But that's another story altogether. And then it has this, uh, I think they've restored uh, one of the stained glass windows that was, that was associated with the building. And I don't know if um, any of you were able to go to the library there when it was still operating before the 
before the new library, the 1967 library was opened, uh, but there were a lot of sunflower decorations, motifs inside this building. And let's see, next one. Um, another classic revival, we see these are Doric columns. They're very plain, uh, have a plain base or plinth, uh, a plain rounded shaft, and then a, a, a plain capital. And again, this is a Greek pediment. So that's where we get the classic uh, revival, the, uh, the square modillions under the eaves. Um, you have some detailing uh, around the window bays with the round uh, arched windows in the second floor um, at the main entrance. Uh, you have this um, banding uh, between uh, the water table area and the upper facade. And that was built in um, 1917 to 1920. And Josiah Walker um, was also associated with this building as the brick mason. And he was an African-American craftsman. Um, as you recall, I mentioned him with the Masonic Lodge there on um, in the 600 block of, of North Main, just north of the, the county courthouse on the west side of the street. Uh, but this, this plan, um, was designed by UG Charles. Don't know how much of an influence he had overseeing the construction of this, but um, he and Josiah Walker are credited with this building. Uh, the Masonic home, I'm gonna speed up because I wanna give you time, guys time to ask questions. Uh, this is the second Masonic home that we had and it was built around 1917, the original Masonic home was a Proudfoot and Bird structure. Uh, the building was struck by lightning. And then uh, the Masons hired a, an architect by the name of Tilton out of Ohio uh, to design um, this mission revival style building. And you can see that in the curve of the pediments. Um, this uh, bell tower, um, the arched window openings, uh, the low roof, um, the clay tile uh, are typical of that. Oops, went too far. English Collegiate Gothic. This is uh, Wichita High School uh, down at the corner of uh, Second and Emporia. And this was built in 1910, 1911. Um, the architect that designed this school was from St. Louis and he did a lot of uh, educational buildings in the Midwest. Um, Eng English Collegiate Gothic uh, has some crenellation design, but the, the big uh, character defining feature of this type of building is what we call the coining. Uh, that's Q-U-I-O-N-I-N-G. These stones at the corners um, of the building. And this building also has some, uh, I think some green men, as I mentioned before on it that are associated with um, educational, um, motifs at the time. Let's see. Oh, sorry, keep going too fast here. College Hill Bathhouse. Um, this is, again, it's a Spanish colonial revival. It was built in 1937. This is a New Deal um, project. And in the mid thirties up through like the early 1950s, there was a um, an arch architectural firm called uh, Force Bloom and Parks, and Edward Force Bloom um, designed this building, and it's it's listed as an, a New Deal era uh, association with the New Deal, as well as the architectural style. You have this colonnade, 
uh, or a cloister, it's sometimes called uh, along the building. So it has some very fine Spanish colonial revival details. Uh, this is the project that is near and dear to my heart. This is the Fresh Air Baby Camp. Um, otherwise, most people in Wichita know this as the Little Girl Scout House because the Fresh Air Baby Camp uh, only occupied this building from like 1920 to 1926 when that function moved to the new Wesley Hospital campus at Hillside and um, Central. And this is, uh, like, like I said, it's in North Riverside at 1221 uh, West 11th Street. Campbell Castle, you can see it over to the west right here. So it's, and there's a great um, disc golf um, course there. So this park gets a lot of use. We're very excited to have this open to the public. You can contact the parks department and lease this for birthdays, weddings, family get-togethers, whatever. It's, it's in their system for the public to use. And this was designed by Lauren Schmidt and George Seedoff. And those are another uh, two really important people, uh, contractor and architect uh, in Wichita. Uh, George Seedoff built the Broadway, I'm sorry, the Broadview Hotel down at uh, Douglas and Waco. And then this again is a WPA project, the Municipal Airport. This was designed by Glenn Thomas. Um, it, has, it has a wonderful Cartholite mural here. If you haven't been out there to see this recently, um, the museum, they have done a lot of uh, repair work. Um, the tower is now open that you can, um, go up in and they've got a wonderful number of, of exhibits um, that I was just in there a couple of weeks ago that I haven't seen before. And they're really doing a great job out there. And this was built, um, started construction in um, 1930 and was finally completed in 1945. Uh, and its claim to fame is that Charles Lindbergh landed at that airport. So now we're getting into the residential buildings and I'm gonna try and go through these uh, really quick. This is Richardsonian Romanesque. You can see the details that were, uh, are common. This was built for uh, Burton Campbell, who was a cattle baron at the time. And the architect on this was um, Alfred Gould. And this was built in 1888. Um, this is the Ailey House. It's located in the Park Place Fairview Historic District. It's at the corner of um, Fairview and 14th Street on the, the northwest corner. Um, turn post, typical, this fish scale detailing um, in the Queen Anne. Um, it has an irregular roof. If you looked at the roof plan, um, it just has a lot of cutouts and um, unusual detailing. It has this uh, tower with the conical roof um, and it, it goes the full height of the building uh, and its use of materials with brick. And as I said, the fish scales, uh, shingles, siding, um, let's see. And this would have been built in the 1890, around 1890. I don't have information about an architect uh, or contractor on this building, but this is another wonderful visual site. Oh, look, we were talking hitching about posts. hitching posts earlier, and there's one right there. So the Park Place Fairview Historic District, um, its period of significance is from uh, like 1890 through uh, 1930. So wide range of bungalows, um, Queen Anne, uh, folk Victorian houses. So I'm gonna go right on. And this is another Queen Anne, same kind of deal. You have a conical shaped roof. This does not look the same. I haven't updated this picture. This is the Chapman Noble House at 1230 uh, North Waco. And um, 
I don't have, we, we never found um, an architect that would have been associated with this. But the thing of it is we had so many lumber companies here in, in Wichita that you could go in and they would have um, house plans that builders could buy and you know they could change them up, uh, change the design a little bit. So that's what we think uh, happened uh, with this with this structure since we couldn't find an architect that was associated. This is another Queen Anne. This is Proudfoot and Bird. This is the aviary uh, that's located on at College Hill Park uh, at Bluff and Circle, I think is what that is. And this was, um, this was George Bird's house and somewhere along down in here, it has a, a cartouche, a stone that says the aviary on it. And so it has a combination of um, shingles uh, and, and horizontal wood siding and the, the stone and these turn posts um, and a, a fun color combination. And this, uh, this was built in 18... 82, I think, no, would have been 82, 86, sorry. This is a plan book house. This is a Radford uh, house. Um, they originated, Radford was big in Chicago area, um, Wisconsin, uh, and they had a team of architects that would design houses. And this was a plan that was purchased at one of the local lumber companies and, um, and had the and the Gould nurse who was he was a farmer had this house built and um, they actually kept the original blueprints of this house that was stamped by Radford Houses and classical revival or free classic Queen Anne means that they have used instead of the turned posts that you would see uh, this is actually an ionic. Um, uh, column as well as these um, kind of Greek uh, or Greek elements with the tympanum, uh, that pedimented, strong pedimented pres uh, presence there has the wraparound porch. So that's where we get the free classic uh, Queen Anne. Um, this is the Jenkin Cottage. This is a, a Victorian folk cottage. Victorian refers to an era um, and not a specific style like Queen Anne uh, was common in the Victorian era of architecture. And so this is, um, you can see the, the verge boards, the detailing in the verge boards, the um, finials uh, on the roof, this bay window, uh, the turned uh, porch columns, uh, very symmetrical windows and this wonderful detailing uh, in this pediment in the upper floor. And this is the Jenkin Co uh, Cottage at 1704 North Fairmount. Um, this is another folk Victorian um, cottage. And this is called the Market Street Cottage. Um, it has some different detailing. It has these um, pedimented window hoods. Um, it has the bay window, the turn posts, um, the irregular roof, um, this hooded window and this one gable, and then this um, pediment tympanum that brings your uh, focuses on the entrance to the house. And this was built in 1888. Don't know, ha, don't have any information about an architect. We have few of this types of styles left in Wichita. Uh, Italianate, this is not, uh, it's not listed, but it's a great example of a, an Italianate residence. It's on uh, North Broadway. I wanna say um, in the 1400 block on the west side of the street. And the last time I knew it had a, uh, it had a uh, gift shop in there. Hmm. 
Um, this is an American Foursquare. It's a great example. Four rooms, uh, four rooms on the first floor. The rooms are stacked, so four on the first, four on the second, and you would have had a. This would have been a, a stair up to the second floor. Uh, this potentially had some kind of a, a ballroom or whatever up on the the half story in the attic. Uh, this is a Bowers house at uh, Market and Ninth Street. This is 1004 North Market. This is the Way Mansion. Many of you might know this. This is eclectic classical revival. Um, oh, I've got to hurry. I'm sorry, 1909. Um, uh, Mr. Way built this mansion for his family, and they lived there until uh, the 1950s. Uh, many wow. of you might know this because of the great um, Christmas decorations that were there. Uh, this is the LW, or I'm sorry, Mark Clapp House on Wellington. Uh, the LW Clapp House is just to the north of it. At, it's in the 1700 block. Again, these uh, paired modillions, this block modillion, uh, the texture, the low hipped roof, um, this, the triangular uh, pediment um, above the main entrance, uh, sun porch and the portico share are character defining features. This is the Penley House, neoclassical revival, uh, Greek pediment all the way with the um, modillions in the eave overhangs, um, colossal columns, which means they, they span uh, two floors. Um, these are ionic, no they aren't, they're Cor uh, Corinthian, which has ionic and, um, ooh, there are multiple uh, capital. Oh, I've lost the word for it. Anyway, they have volutes. You can see the little uh, volutes, and then it has acanthus leaves up at the top, uh, and this um, porch, um, the the wraparound porch on both uh, floors, the first and the second. This is the Parks Houston house. Wow. Um, this was um, or this is an Albert Dumont design. Uh, you can see more clearly here, this is what an ionic capital looks like. It's got these volutes. They're a smooth column, uh, shaft and a very plain uh, base. Again, the dental, the dentaling details, the roof line, the materials. Uh, Dumont was a partner with C.W. Terry. Um, Colonial Revival, um, this happens to be in College Hill. College Hill is a great area to see a, a great difference in revival styles. Um, the Colonial Revival is very, um, um, the fenestration is very regular, Pair, windows stacked, um, a window above the main entrance, the, the, the uh, pilasters, uh, plain pilasters, these, this fan, well, it would have been a fan light, but it's that fan light um, decoration. Uh, this is another UG Charles. This is a Dutch colonial revival, and that is defined by the roof line. Um, an English revival has more, it has straight and much more vertical uh, roof line. Um, this is Tudor Revival. This is the RDW Clap House. Uh, again, uh, Tudor uh, Revival has the coining, um, the stone details, the stacked um, and multiple um, chimneys, um, the attention with um, materials, um, features on the house brick with with the limestone. Um, this is at 320 North Belmont. Um, this is another Tudor revival. Um, typical, um, where you would see these as Tudor style, these would be timbers and infilled with um, plaster. But this is, um, those, those timbers are not structural 
or um, anything like that. That's just the progression of the Tudor revival style to the, to the United States. Um, this is a vernacular Tudor revival. This is the Grace Wilkie House at uh, English and Belmont in College Hill. The C.M. Jackman House, this is another Lorenz Schmidt, George Seedoff project. Uh, C.M. Jackman was a, um, a manager at one of the, the flour mills here in Wichita. And again, the, the Frank Lloyd Wright House is a, a prairie style, a great example of prairie style, low to the ground, open to its surrounding landscapes. This is another UG Charles designed house. This is a craftsman, two story. Uh, you can see the very plain brackets. Um, these, um, now I've lost the word for it. Um, these flat um, porch uh, wall dormers. That's what I'm looking for, wall dormers. And then typical of craftsmen, you can see the details uh, in the window uh, pattern. Uh, bungalows are real big here in Wichita. This just happens to be a Spanish revival. You can see that in the detail of the, the entryway, the low hipped roof, uh, the materials used, um, this um, portico share that uh, has a room above it on the south side of the house. Right. And this is over on um, Back Bay Boulevard. Uh, I want to say it's a 900 block of Back Bay Boulevard. I can't read that lettering on there. Um, I'm going to skip to mid-century modern. Uh, Glenn Benedict, uh, this is the Elizabeth McLean house up on McLean Boulevard. Um, she was one of the, she's the first woman developer in Wichita. Ben McLean uh, was her father. Um, this is very significant um, mid-century modern ranch. And then another one is William Caton. He was an architect from Winfield and he's designed multiple um, ranch style houses here in Wichita. This has a Cotswold England feel to it. He was stationed there uh, when he was in the service. And so it's very, the eaves are very low to the ground. You can stand there and actually reach up your hand and, and touch uh, these eaves. Um, oh Streamline Modern, this is the Frank and Harvey Ablaw house. Um, it, it was a duplex. Um, the kitchen area, the common space is here in the middle. Um, these curves are, are part of the uh, modern uh, style and this was actually when it was built, it was uh, like a stainless steel material like what you would see on the cover of airplanes. And this was um, this was built in uh, 1939. And then this is just a great, style of art modern. This is one of my favorite art modern houses in Wichita. <laughs> and it's uh, north oh, of yeah. Central Avenue, uh, kind of in the Sleepy Hollow uh, neighborhood in the 800 block of, I want to say Bluff. Uh, it's not listed, but it, it is just classical art modern. Uh, we have very few art modern structures in Wichita. Okay, sorry, I ran through that and you have two minutes for questions. We should have scheduled you for a two-parter, Kathy. Because this we is a lot of have. amazing material. Was the, um, I think it was mine. the Victorian Folk House. Was that on Topeka Street? Uh, Dwight was wondering. The what now? Uh, I think the Victorian Folk House. The Victorian right? Folk House is on, there's one on Market Street. Hmm. In the, um, it's in the 1200 block on the east side of the street. And then there's the Jenkin Cottage that's at 1704 North Fairview. And uh, Nancy was wondering, is the Avery still on the market? Because apparently it was, it wasn't. Um, it was you recently. know, I think, I think it is. 
Um, I know that I've been past there and it was listed, but I haven't, I don't know if it still is or not. I can imagine it's pretty complex to be the owner of a historic property. I mean, wouldn't there be a, per, a permissions process involved for many things that one would do on the property? That's um, a guess. You know, we have a design review process. Mm. It's not as onerous as what someone might think. What we try to do is maintain the original historic materials. And if that can't be done, then we try to replicate those materials with the same uh, patterns like the like the turn posts on the Queen Anne. Uh, we try and, and replicate those as close as possible if we don't have the ability to um, get like another wood column that's turned in the same way right. that you would have to find a craftsman to do that. Or fuselage material for the Avalon Or house. fuselage <laughs> material, yes. Um, Pat asks, um, where is the Dutch colonial house? That's the Hypatia house. It's on North Broadway, mm. uh, just north of the Popeyes. <laughs> on on, on, but on of North course. Broadway. <laughs> it's south of 13th Street. There are those two beautiful little, they, they resemble the homes I saw, I, saw in, I saw in Harlem when I was in New York. Those two beautiful little houses, like teens or 20s houses, almost like mini brownstones over on 13th. Do you know what I'm talking about? Many brownstones they over kind of, on 13th. Yeah, um, probably, uh, heck, I wish I knew the cross street. Is it there close to Maine? I, 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 they're usually deserted and boarded up. They, they frequently are. And they're just beautiful houses. Um, Jennifer has another, has a, has a, has a question. If, um, Oh, heck, now I've lost it. If placed on the National Historic Register, are the regulations requirements for residential the same as for a commercial space? Um, basically, yes. You don't want to, if something's been changed, you don't have to replicate what was there originally. The main goal is to uh, maintain the original materials, the floor plans. If you're, if you're listed in one of the registers, um, of course, we have uh, flexibility with kitchen space, bathroom space, adding closets, but we want to keep this, the same um, architectural appearance of the exterior of the building and not move around walls too much in, on the inside. Indeed, because you could, I, I, years ago when I was looking at some houses in, um, uh, in, East, in Eastboro with a friend, there were houses that it was clear the support wall had kind of been taken out for aesthetic reasons, you know? Right. So, and it was really a problem. <laughs> it's gonna, yes, I guess you'd really have to consult an engineer. <laughs> but, well, we've actually reached 2.30 already. Joe says, nice presentation, Kathy. And well, thank Pat you very says, much. Thank you. Maybe we can do this again sometime after I retire. I think I think I think we should. <laughs> Absolutely, because I really I hadn't realized that we're just how to the, what extent we're really just scratched the surface here today. Yeah, you know, we did really just beautiful scratched. houses I'd forgotten about. And Michelle Enke says, "Great presentation, Kathy. Thank you so much. She's our local history. Yes, she is. She's a great, great resource. She's a great resource." Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks again, Kathy.